Hello and welcome back to the Bookshelf Odyssey. My name is Art and we are exploring my bookshelves. And this month we are looking at Elizabeth Gaskell. Now, a couple things. First off, I do look like I'm in a very professional looking podcast studio, but I can assure you that it's not the case. I'm actually in a hotel room. I'm out of town uh, at the moment and had some time to uh, do some recording finally. Uh, this month is been... Um, Gaskell in April, which I have was really excited to get to, and then all of my plans kind of just crumbled, <laughs> and uh, I, I feel very sorry about that. But I did manage to get north and south read, and I was going to do some videos uh, along the way, but I ended up finishing the book before I even had a chance to record any videos. But today I will be talking about that book. I sat down to make a video and realized there's just so much in it. Uh, I, I learned a couple of things about doing a, a, a book video for classics, like that, how I like to do them. And that is, I, I think it'd be better to do a slow read for me, just like I did with Great Expectations last year. Uh, it might take, you know, five or six months to get through, but I think I would have more time to uh, think about the plot and explore the plot more. It just might be I need to learn how to be a little more concise in my words, but you know, I can't teach an old dog new tricks, I guess. But today we're talking about Elizabeth Gaskell and North and South. Uh, first of all, Elizabeth Gaskell, if you don't know, is one of my favorite Victorian authors. Uh, she was a British novelist and short story writer. Uh, she's best known for her works such as Mary Barton, which is an excellent read. Uh, Cranford, also a, a good read and North and South, which is right now my favorite Gaskell. Uh, she was born in London, but spent most of her childhood and early adult years in the North of England, where she drew inspiration for many of her novels. Gaskell's writing explored themes such as social justice, industrialization, and gender roles, and she was known for her sympathetic portrayals of working class characters. In addition to her literary career, Gaskell was also involved in various philanthropic and social causes, including the welfare of factory workers and the education of women. She was a respected figure in Victorian literary circles and counted Charles Dickens and Charlotte Bronte among her friends. And so for this month, I read North and South. I hope that you have been able to read it as well and enjoyed your reading experience. Uh, North and South was published serially in Household Words, which was Charles Dickens's magazine, from 1854 to 1855. Uh, and I believe that North and South was Dickens's idea for the title. Uh, don't quote me on that one. But I think she just wanted to recall the book after her main character, uh, Margaret Hale, but went with North and South instead. Here's a bit what the story is about. It says, The story is set in the fictional industrial town of, of Milton in northern England and explores the social and economic tensions between the newly emerging industrial north and the more traditional south of England. The novel follows the story of Margaret Hale, a young woman who moves with her family from the south of England to the north, where her father has taken up work as a private tutor. Margaret is initially repulsed by the industrial town of Milton, but she gradually becomes involved in the lives of the working class people there, particularly those employed in the local cotton mills. Through Margaret's experiences, the novel examines issues such as class, gender, industrialization, and the conflicts between capital and labor. The story also includes a romantic subplot as Margaret finds herself drawn to John Thornton, a wealthy and dare I say hunky uh, mill owner who is struggling to balance the ambition with his sense of responsibility towards his workers. Okay, so rather than going through the entire plot and being in a video that will take like 45 hours to get through, um, there's a couple parts that I just want to talk about that I think struck me as being the most uh, impactful or interesting. Uh, to start off with, the beginning of the story, near the beginning, when Margaret's parents uh, and Margaret, they moved to the north of, of England. Uh, the reason is because Margaret's father was a vicar uh, or a pastor of some kind, and he has some kind of religious doubt that he doesn't really explore, but it was it's enough for him to say, I need to step back, I need to step down, and 
think this through, which I think is admirable of him. Um, and really just coming to terms with whatever it was he was struggling over. I don't recall if they go into too much detail about it. Um, but I, I admire that, you know, that he's willing to say this, this is not what I thought it would be, or this is not what I want it to be. And so I'm going to step away and try something different. I still want to be involved with helping people. You know, he becomes a tutor, but you know, from the religious side of standpoint of things, he, he decides to step away. He said, I'm going to, I'm just going to walk away from that. Uh, so it seems like it was a little bit vague as to why he stepped down, but some believe he had uh, no longer had uh, f faith in the church's doctrine, the church of England's doctrine uh, that he felt like he had a, a moral, he didn't, he no longer had a moral right to hold that position. And so I find that interesting in a, in a, in the time we live today, I think it's good, you know, to have a, a serious thought about what it is that you actually believe and, and why. And it might require some changes, whether it's a doctrinal change or a church change or, uh, you know, what have you. I, I think that's a, I think that's good. That being said, he kind of um, put his family in a hard position uh, to say, now, you know, we're going to completely move up to the north. We're going to go to a completely new area of the country we've never been to before. And uh, you guys just have to come along. Uh, it doesn't really feel like they have much say in the matter. Uh, but that could be just a cultural thing that was ha happening there. One of the things I like to study in Victorian writing is the Victorian writers' religious viewpoints and how that informs and influences their uh, their stories. So I promise this won't become a whole um, video where I get sidetracked talking about Dickens and religion. Uh, but there needs I need to do a video about that because that's real. That's um, that's a special interest of mine. I've been reading Elizabeth Gaskell's letters as well, and some of the things she says in there that helps me understand more about her religious beliefs and what she held to. I I, I think it's all just really, I don't know, it gives me some uh, a deeper insight into uh, the writers and why they chose to write what they what they wrote. That's a plot line that interests me. Let me know what you think about his decision to leave, how that is really the, the inciting event that starts this whole book out and moves Margaret and her family from the south of England to the north, which is a more working class um, side of the country from what I understand. Um, she meets there. She meets John Thornton. I I like this character a lot. He's he's kind of gruff. He's kind of stern, but not in an unpleasant way. Sorry, everyone, but not like Mr. Darcy or um, even more so not like um, Rochester from Jane Eyre, uh, who I, I really don't care for at all. The more I read Jane Eyre, um, he, he's not like Heathcliff either. Uh, so maybe Mr. Darcy is not the best example. I think I think Mr. Darcy has some um, good side, uh, good things to to his character. But all, all that aside, um, this is the kind of if you're gonna do a gruff character, I really like this. I, I just picture him as this kind of dark and brooding, hardworking man, and Margaret comes into his life and just completely turns it up upside down. And that's another part I love about this story is the. Um, the romantic plot between Margaret and Mr. Thornton. But then how Gaskell uses that relationship to explore gender roles, to explore uh, what is expected of women. There's a couple of great scenes that, that do this very well. One is uh, when the writers are coming and Margaret is standing in front of John Thornton to protect him from like flying rocks. She gets hit in the head. It's this whole dramatic scene. It's, it's, it's quite great. But in, in that people are kind of tisking over her because, you know, she was saying it looked like she was embracing Mr. Mr. Thornton. And, you know, that's, that's not allowed. <laughs> right. And that whole plot is, is very fascinating. And Margaret Hale, I think is, is definitely a very strong female Victorian character that if, if that's if as much as I love Dickens, a lot of his early, especially his early characters are uh, female characters are very 
um, silly or weak or, or fall into that, um, you know, the, the fainting and swooning trope, or he, he kind of pokes fun at them a lot. There's, uh, you have to get into the uh, later novels before you really start to uncover some, some quality Dickens characters. Although there are some in the earlier novels that might be in like uh, side characters, but for the most part, he gets better as he writes, as he gets older. Uh, but Margaret Hale is a fantastic woman character. And I, and I think she's probably my favorite in all of Victorian literature uh, from what I've read so far. Just her, uh, her strength, her, her kindness, you know, her, her deep love for her family, for, and for the country, for, for nature. Um, a lot of that I, I connect with very much. And I, and so I love her. She's very enjoyable to read as a character. One of the other main plots in North and South is the whole um, society struggles between the North and South of England. And, and how when Margaret first gets there, there's a lot about their society that they have, she has to come to learn and to understand. And um, she goes to visit people and, and like they would do down in, in the South. And it's not always met with the same friendliness that it would be met with in the South. And some of that might have to do with more um, social standings. Uh, you know, if she was coming from a richer background or a more wealthy background than some of the people she's around. But uh, she makes some very, she makes some genuine friends in the community. And I love how those play out, uh, which, you know, in the end, this book reminds me of how important it is when you, you know, live in an area or go to a new area is to understand, to understand the culture, understand the people, seek out to make, you know, genuine connections and friends with, with them, under, understand their struggle, understand, try to understand their, their highs and lows, you know, all, all of that. I think there's a lot of good lessons there uh, that we can take away from that. I really like how John and Margaret have this spark between them. They definitely have feelings for each other, but coming from such different backgrounds of society and they're dealing with this problem of, of the riots and the, and the worker strikes from two very different backgrounds. And I love that they work through that problem. They talk about it, that he explains his situation and, and she is, um, and she explains her points of view and, and how that all gets resolved is, is really, really just well done. Um, I believe this book is a masterpiece and deserve and deserves a reread that I will definitely be doing quite possibly at a slower rate in the near future. It's reception. I know was a bit mixed. I know that, um, that there were some bosses that tried to keep the book out of the hands of their workers and others would provide them with copies of the book. Uh, and I, I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm not sure that, you know, everyone enjoyed it. Certainly the biography I'm reading right now, even the, the writer of the biography doesn't have a strong um, enjoyment of the novel. She kind of sides with the critics of, of the book that it's maybe not some of her best work. Uh, I came across this quote that somebody said this about Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, they said she makes a creditable effort to overcome her deficiencies um, implied as a woman, but it's all in vain. Apparently that quote is attributed to critic and novelist Henry James. And I tried to find somewhere where that was uh, confirmed, but I, I wasn't able to find any um, from a, a, a more legitimate source and where I found this. But apparently James made this comment about Elizabeth Gaskell's writing in a review of her novel, uh, Wives and Daughters in 1880. Well, it says, uh, while James was generally complimentary of Gaskell's work, he also expressed his belief that she was limited by her gender and that she could not fully escape the constraints placed upon her as a female author writing in the Victorian era. Uh, what I'd love to do is just carry on the conversation in the comments. If you've read this book with me, let's just discuss it more in the comments or make your own video. Be sure to tag me and we can uh, talk more there. This will be just kind of a jumping off point. Um, for us to carry on this this discussion. Now, I do hope to have a couple more Elizabeth Gaskell related videos coming out. I know we're almost done with April, uh, but this will probably spill over into May 
Um, and all I can say is I, I apologize for any delay that uh, has happened. Uh, I had a pretty, going into uh, April, I had a pretty quiet month planned and then uh, a lot of crazy stuff happened in my life and everything, Not, nothing bad, just real busy. And then it seemed like whenever I did have time to film something, I was just so tired um, to to deal with it, uh, to, to record. So I just kind of uh, had to put it off. Well, I hope you enjoyed reading it. I look forward to talking about it with you in the comments. Um, you can find me on, on, uh, discord as well. I'm also on Voxer, you know, wherever you are, you hang out, just let, let me know how you read it, how it, how it went for you. And if you enjoyed it or not, we'll keep the conversation going there. And so until next time, happy reading and take care.